Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Flyer here. Today I will be demonstrating how I like to do freehand and techniques and tricks that help me get that done uh, as best I can. So uh, for things to consider while you're going to go ahead and attempt freehand is pick an area that works well. Don't pick a bunch of you know scaled or vented sections but um, you know find a nice flat area or start start bigger and then uh, don't try to paint too small at, too, uh, at first. Um, for brushes I've got a selection of some Winsor & Newton and some uh, some uh, Simply Simmons. They're uh, 5 O's, 00, 0, and um, regular 0. You don't all necessarily want to get the absolute smallest brush you can find. That's not always the, the right answer. Um, the reason being is that if you look at these smaller brushes, the what you're using is capillary action to hold paint in the brush. And the smaller the areas of the brush the less paint which means it can dry quicker so sometimes a smaller brush isn't always the answer so don't go out and buy the super tiniest brush thinking that'll help you paint super tiny I made that mistake when I first started painting other things that are uh, helpful a mechanical pencil uh, I like to use the plastic ones just in case if I you know there's metal tip ones and things like that but if I mess up or if the lead falls out and I scrape I'm not taking the paint off of the miniature another thing you can do is you can take the the pencil and you can hold it at an angle and sharpen and be able to use that tiny edge that you've created just like you would you know at a sharpened pencil and the demonstration of what i've done here is i've if you can see the this rectangular box on the tail that's actually done with this graphite on the pencil i just sketched it out to give myself an area to work in so that i could see when i'm starting out other things that you'll see people um, talk about are these uh, micron pigma pens um, this is a 005 it is it is really really tiny um, these are great. Sometimes people use these for panel lining as well. I've done that before with this pen. It, it really stresses the pen and it can, I mean, these are not cheap, so you maybe only get one or two models out of it, at least with, with this small of a, of a uh, tip. But for adding little black details or edging or things like that, I will use this from time to time and it does work well. So that's something else you can add to maybe uh, want to get if you're looking at that. Um, big one though is having a, a wet palette. So I've already got my colors out that I'm planning on using. I've got a um, parchment paper there to keep everything damp and it's going to naturally keep the paint thin as I'm working and also allow me to work back and forth between colors so the and then the last thing is obviously you have something to draw inspiration from I mean it's cool to be completely creative but um, I'm I'm big on either printing it out here's a I'll come back to this here in a minute but uh, you know I've got things that I found on the internet um, or through my books uh, that I want to paint. So uh, here's a symbol that's going to go on the headset for the second Tarian Pride. Uh, you know, I've copied this out of a out of the Lao book for the Legionnaires, the uh, Kingston Legionnaires. And then this one I printed off of Sarna. Uh, it's huge, but um, we'll talk about some of these as we go because there's a, a way of uh, going at a, a small image like that because you're just trying to get the effect. You know, you're not going to be able to paint all these minute details at that scale. So, for instance, back here to the uh, this Magistry of Canopus third, you've got, you know, this this uh, Roman numeral three and then the bull and all that stuff. So what I've done is kind of come up with a plan. It's like, well, I'm going to put a background behind it because it's black and I'm painting on green and I want it to kind of stand out. I know the purple will look good, but those those three Roman numerals might not. So I'm going to do kind of a, a medium to, to maybe mid-grade gray border around it. You can use white, you can use any color, any accent color or something to contrast. You can use red. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of insignias actually even have something behind them, like a field, just like that eagle and the uh, with the red circle behind it. But if it doesn't, you know, all you're really doing is trying to get just something. It's almost just like having that shadowed text. So there's something to just kind of encapsulate what's going on. And at this scale, again, you know, it, it can be you know white or off white. So I'll be using uh, I think linen for uh, linen white for this color, but uh, or excuse me, gray. Um, I think I'm going to use linen white on another one. 
Um, and then I've come up with a plan and in an order that I'm planning on applying the paint. So I'm gonna do that gray field here, then the black, then the purple, then the brown, and the last touch will be the green. And then any touch-ups, I might even use that little micron pen to maybe get the tail in there. Uh, or it just dep depends on how the uh, process goes. So. All right, so to get started here, let me get uh, let me get the paints laid down here too. I've got uh, I've got model color black. I've got uh, some Stonewall gray that I've actually just added a brush full of, of black to to darken it just a little bit. Regular model color purple, ochre brown, and goblin green. So those will be what we use for this Pegasus here. And I'll bring the palette into shot here as well. All right, so starting out, I'm gonna use my number zero brush. Keep it fairly damp. And I know I wanna get this, this area encapsulated so that I have an area to work. Let's stir up the paint a little bit just to make sure it hasn't gotten separated. So I want it thin because I do want to work with it, but I also want to test it out and see because if you get paint running away, especially if you painted a model, it's really frustrating to have it just blot on there and then have to wait for it to dry. So now I'm using the natural direction of the brush and I'm not trying to go directly to the outside of the lines yet. That's what those lines are going to help me do. And you can see the paint's a little bit, a little bit wet. But I blocked in just the inside of the, the rectangle so far. Now I've got that, that shadow on the outside. And then what I'm gonna do as it dries, start to just work closer and closer to those edges. You have a natural flow the way that your hand moves. If you try to paint against it, then you're gonna end up um, with crooked lines. So you will need to move the models around and you'll see me doing that a lot, especially in my videos, where I'm constantly turning the miniature to get, it's not just to get an angle to where I can actually see, it's also to affect a, a ergonomic, for me, motion, uh, range of motion so that I can put down an accurate, in either straight line or whatever I may be trying to do. And then also as you, as you paint with the brush, as I come down this way at that last little bit as you lift there's going to be more paint here it won't on the paper because the paper is very absorbent but essentially what happens is this is the start of your brush stroke the end of it the reason there's all that paint there is I'm just over exaggerating is that's what happens so if you're if you're trying to get paint in the in an upper edge that's fine but pull it towards the middle don't try to pull towards an outer edge because you'll end up with maybe a little blob of paint there and it might go outside of those confines that you've defined if you've sketched them in. You can also work perpendicularly. If that's more for you. So I've got my hand on the table. I've got the cork in my hand resting on the table so it's not gonna move. And then I've got my fingers resting on the cork so I'm trying to be as stable as possible. And I mean, it will take some practice. You will have to get used to what works best for you, what's comfortable for you. So now, you can see I've got that container and there's a little bit of that pencil outline on the outside, maybe down in the lower right. So I'm gonna pr probably even that up here. And if you make a mistake, if you're working with thinned paints, you know, you can take that clean damp brush like you've seen me do before, because I make a lot of mistakes, and go and just line underneath it, like sure enough as I'm talking about it. Way too much water.
All right. So got our gray base. Next up are the Roman numerals. Take this black. I like to work with a thin black because black does really have good coverage even when it's not thick. I'm gonna start in the middle to set the separation because I need three of these. I'm not worried about the width at the top and the bottom just yet. Trying to get as close to the top side as I can. And then I'll flip it around. spot down here where I want to get maybe a little bit of that more definition in the middle I don't care about because I'm going to cover it up with some of that purple so I'm going to use this micron pen since I talked about it come in there and we just even these out just a little bit and I'm, I'm, I'm not drawing I'm actually just dotting Again, don't worry about being absolutely perfect at this scale. You're not going to get absolutely every single minute detail. So you can see we got three Roman numerals. I want to let that dry just a little bit. Um, don't let that. Don't try to paint over that wet pigment. That's permanent ink, and if you smear that, that's not coming off with a wet brush. So now I'm going to switch to one of my smaller brushes. I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, Windsor Newton Zero. Okay. So now we're going to deal with some purple. I'm going to get this purple down. And again, you know, you're probably thinking, oh yeah, if I only have to paint it one time, I'll keep the paint a little thicker. Well, that's not always the, the case. You, you do need to except that you're probably going to need to do more than one layer and I know when detail painting you're like oh that's just an opportunity for a mistake but realize that doing it twice is better than having a big old glob of paint especially if it's too thick and you can't go back and make corrections so now I'm just setting this purple in the middle I'm being very very light with the, the touch basically almost just almost just doing a horizontal line for now because I don't want to try to get the legs and things like that from the bull on the first pass throw this down for reference here All right, so it's kind of sweeps up to the right so right now I've done kind of just horizontal and maybe just push it up a little bit in between the second and third and then I'm gonna see if I can't get a little bit of just outward uh, purple there just to, to kind of show that there's a, a bowl shape. get fairly close to the model with my with my face so with the camera in the way this is a bit more challenging
and this is about the midline there so you can see you're really not going to get much of a a bull outline but okay now I'm just going to throw in this brown and I chose a light it's this this color if you look it's a little bit more vibrant than this brown and this obviously this printed out but that'll show more contrast at especially just a small you know dot of paint we're throwing on here thinning out just a little the thing I like to do is as I'm running this on my hand is roll the brush to bring it to a point to give me something to work with to be uh, as accurate Dabbing in inside the purple as best I can. Add a little bit of this goblin green to get the guy grabbing the bull by the horns. It's kind of angled at a four grade, right? and I've got this purple area over here. So the, the green over the purple probably won't show up as well, given the fact that the whole tank is green. there go back and even out just notice that the Roman numeral down here doesn't quite come all the way down again I could use that micron pen if I wanted and then the tail here is kind of it's black so I'm just gonna add Just a touch. Let's see if I can maybe bring this area in. All right, so that's a super small example. knowing full well that we weren't going to get every single detail and you have to of course accept that but there we go and if you want you can add a little bit brighter green and maybe touch up that uh, where the the guy is supposed to be I might just do that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white. Got some uh, linen white here, Reaper linen white. And I'm gonna go and grab some of that goblin green and mix a little bit to just give it a little bit brighter color. Because overall, it's a fairly dark, uh, dark emblem. Touch back on his there. So now there's definitely a little spot of 
green there. And that's it for, for that. So I know it's not super detailed to show you the examples, but not a whole lot you can do with something on that scale and looking for those kinds of details, but the intent is there. So now we'll move on to this one here. So talking real quick about how to attack this. So like I did before with those the rectangle around the, the Roman numerals, I kind of broke out and encapsulated it. If you look at this image here, we've got three big circles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my linen white. I'm gonna lay down basically three circles. I know I'm probably not gonna get this little detail. I might be able to, but um, the, the three big circles are the, the overall shape of the back background. And then I'll lay down the, the black. And then after that, then obviously the cross swords, which I'm gonna put gray first and then see if I can maybe do a little bit of a white highlight, but uh, at least nothing else. I'll just use the gray cause I'll get better coverage and it's more forgiving than the white. And then lastly, I'll add just basically almost a little T of a uh, of that ochre brown to kind of give the appearance of a brass or um, you know bronze style style hilt so hand guard so we'll be working on this this hetzer for reference to see I painted it fairly small all basically in that front uh, this front panel here so now I know my area where I'm gonna work I'm gonna move to that that linen white because first off it's not bright white so that will prevent it from uh, looking a little off on a subdued miniature because I've done I've washed this this image down pretty good or this uh, this paint job down pretty good so looking for three circles and we want to leave room for the swords to cross too so go one two that's just initially now I can go okay do I want to make it a little bigger do I want to add you know change the shape a little bit but you know just like I did before with working inside of those pencil lines I'm not uh, I'm not trying to get it all done on the very first paint application so now I can kind of massage and maneuver from the area that already has paint and kind of work outwards with the tip of my brush sort of set the defined shape and maybe increase the size a little bit. Just a touch in this lower right corner here. But as you can see, like I was saying before, I've chosen a, a flat panel. It doesn't have a lot of lines running through it. it. Gives me area to work. You know, if you find a bigger bigger panel to work on, or if you know, if you want to do something, you want to paint something, you know, nice big flat surfaces like on the back of an LRM t uh, carrier. Or, Plenty of the tanks have lots of services to at least start practicing. I would also start with maybe working on numbers. And you do the same thing. You can do the the outline and then do the highlight in the inside of it and you get a nice shadowed number, plus it gives you practice. Alright, so there's our defined area. Now I'm gonna roll in with the the black, still keeping it nice and thin. I'm going to start just 
moving it around on the inside and then kind of pushing as I go. Put some water on my ferrule there. Don't get it close to the edge. If you if you go too close to the edge, no big deal. If you completely wipe out the white though, you probably probably want to go back and do it again. Unfortunately now you'd be putting white over black, so it'll do a little more work, but it's not anything that'll be unrecoverable. Alright, so there's the there's the outline, so we've got our Black will be where the star field are, and then the, the white's the outline area. Back to our reference photo here. Okay. So we know I'm going to do this star, maybe I'll do this one, and I might just throw a couple of white dots in there at the very, very end. I don't want to put anything down now because I want to get these swords in first. Since I might be a little thicker on the, on the line. So now I'm going to switch over to this gray. And again, now I'm going to rest the rest the miniature. I'm going to check my the tip of my brush. I'm almost just sketching. I'm not trying to do it in one even pass. I'm sure, there's probably somebody there that can do it that way, but I'm doing what works for me. There's one. Turn the model. Okay. Going outside the line there just a little bit. I got a little bit. I didn't take my own advice and I ended my brush stroke at the very finest point. So now I've got to I've moisten the tip of the brush and I'm actually just brushing the paint back to thin it down. All right, so now we've got the sword, the gray outline, so I can go over to my white, keeping it thin. a little bit with my accent line there so touch up with the black it's a nice thing about having that wet palette Lastly here, before we go back and try to do the stars, add that poker. Not trying to get anything super detailed, but I'm just trying to add like the handle, the hilt, the handguard. I mean, you could do it in a metallic if you want, but I think at this size and level of detail, you're asking a lot out of a metallic to represent a metallic at that level. So I guess technically this is non-metal metallic, but it's really just a visual depiction of metal.
Now I'm going to go back to that linen white. I'm going to see if we can't get that little, uh, little bit of star detail in here. No, actually. Go back to that micron pen. I'm going to push out some of these black details and just thin out the blades of the sword. Again, I'm dotting. I'm not trying to color it or draw. I'm just slowly dabbing the ink from the pen onto the model. A little bit of shadow underside of that hilt there. touch up that hilt on the it looks like I got a little bit wily on the gray right here so I'm gonna grab since I've got green behind it it looks like. I'm going to take some of this goblin green. Just a touch of black. I'm almost It's almost a glaze. And I'm just going to see if I can't just touch a little bit there to bring it back into a more of a shadowed appearance. not lost completely on the miniature. If you wanted to go back to the original colors you've done with the with the original uh, paint scheme, then that's always an option too. Alright, so the black should be dry. Now I'm just going to go back and add just those little dots simulate those star fields. At this point I'm just barely touching with my brush. Kind of just show that there's something there, but now I'm going to tackle the Chesterton Reserves and the Kingston Creos Legionnaires uh, symbols. So real quick, this one I'm going to start with the, I'm sorry, let me focus here. I'm going to start with the red field and then I'm gonna add the linen white, and then I'm gonna do the black details probably with the micron pen because I can just add a, a line and then just these spots of color. And then for the actual reserves emblem. So this is a black field and you can see it is a green to a yellow fade. So I'll do black and then I'll lay down the green, the goblin green, and then I'll add yellow uh, probably yellow glaze or even a mix of the yellow and goblin green and then work up to just the yellow in the middle and Then to get this line here. We'll see about either painting it or I might use that micron pen And then I've just got some red to do the the cross hatch there All right, so I've got this uh, Chesterton reserves javelin and then on my palette. I've added some Reaper rack red and some master series um, Pale Saffron. All right, for the areas I'm gonna work, I think, I think we're gonna do this uh, leg area right here, the upper right leg, and then I think, so still gotta get allow 
decal on here. I think uh, I think maybe the front. I think just the front of both legs will be good, and then we'll put the loud decal up here. So let's start with the Chesterton Reserves shield, which basically looks like an upside down arrowhead. So again, I could sketch this out on with pencil if I want. It's it's fairly dark in this area, but the graphite shows a a bit of a shine, so that's good if you're working on something dark. It's still useful. And because I've already got this is black with a dark brown over it, the black is not going to contrast very much in this area. Still going to lay it down because it will still define the shape that I'm looking for. It's a little hard to get a pen in there, we'll see. And then while I'm at it, I'll grab some of that rack red. I'm going to get that circle going. If you do home print decals, you can print out shapes using uh, PowerPoint or the software that they have. And I've actually printed red circle decals before. So something to consider too if you're doing making decals and things like that. You could actually, you can paint over a decal. And that way, maybe if you want to define the size with the decal at first or get the placement down you know it's always you know whatever is you know least amount of work and or whatever method that you prefer take it out a little further here all right circle look. This is pretty round. Just gonna add a little a second layer just to get a little more pop. So now I've laid out the, the base areas where I want to do my work. Let's see. Let's get that. Oops. Excuse me. Let's get that goblin green going. So now we're going to define out to the edges. water on my brush.
this emblem a little, a little bigger. It does come down to a point, so I'm going to have to turn the model around, or I won't ever get it with the direction that my bristles are going. So. nice thing is too about working on this particular area is that if I do get out of the lines or whatever I can touch up with that dark color on the outer edge work it back and it's the same color as the actual outside of the emblem so I'm not saying paint your models to plan it out that way but sometimes you get the little bonuses there or you can plan it out paint your emblems the way that you know, oh yeah, I want that leg to be black so I can put an emblem on it later. Nothing wrong with having a plan either. Alright, I need to get that tip defined. Throw the yellow in the middle. Now I'm just kind of moving it around. So my yellow needs to be a little thinner. Get that tide pool effect there, so I'm just going to dot. middle. Let that dry. We'll come back to that and go work on this other side here. Alright, so we got the eagle shape. Pretty much fills the whole 11 o'clock quadrant. Comes horizontally. A bit of a swoop in there. Comes up outside the circle. And I'm checking back at my picture because I don't have that memorized. Looks like the head ends just past the middle, so that's not going to be too much further here. And there's a, the other wing. Follows it down to about the five o'clock position. see how I worked from a 
a reference point and then just expand it as I went. All right, I'm gonna take some of this yellow. Some of this green. Pull those together. And I'm gonna come around the outside edge of the yellow area I defined earlier. It's nice and thin, so I'm not worried about coverage necessarily, just to kind of blend the line and give the effect of a bit of a gradient from the green, or yellow-green to yellow. I'm going to need to let that dry for a little bit. Micron pen. So the other reference up here. The base of the sword is almost at the 630 position. have black on them and then these outward feathers upper edge of the left wing Looks like a bird. It's one of those uh, leave well enough alone. I do have this little red uh, tail here at the bottom. Tassel or something, so I'm gonna go ahead and just throw that on there too, which it looks like just almost a Z. right and up. There we go. Pretty happy with that. Come back over here. And I'm gonna give a thinned yellow, added some lots of water to it here. Essentially just glazing to smooth it out. Again, it's yellow guys, you just gotta be patient with it and know that you're gonna be working in layers. All right, and once that's dry, I'll be able to get the, the line. I don't know if I'll be able to get a micron pen in there. I might have to just hand paint the, the black. I 
It does have a sharper black edge on the right side. Which I might come back and redefine with the uh, micron pen, or I might do it with a brush here. the heavier side on the right I'm just and it's I can reach it with the angle I'm at I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little brush work there all right so now we need the the left to right stripe try to leave just a little bit of that yellow showing just like in the picture but if I don't make it that's okay plus signs away from being finished. Do the easy one first here. Check the paint. Oh, there's a little bit of yellow on that left side of that black stripe. I'll go touch that up probably with the pen. But overall, I'm happy with that. So. But as always, post your questions and comments below. Visit us on Facebook on our Camo Specs Online page. Subscribe to our channel and uh, occasionally watch us on Twitch. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.